Meantime, United Health out with earnings in just the last hour, reporting $99.8 billion in revenues, beating estimates. Joining us now to break down the numbers, Jared Holes, equity, uh, healthcare equity strategist at Mizuho. Jared, great to have you with us. Um, everybody is focused, as we talked about last night on FAST, uh, on the MLR, the medical loss ratio, um, which came in. Um, if you back out the impact from, from change, it came in a little better than what you thought it might. Yeah, Melissa, great to see you. Um, yeah, this uh, 80, sub 84% number, I think, is, uh, you know, very significant. Obviously, you know, sentiment headed into the quarter for United and managed care as, as a group broadly, um, pretty negative, down 15% year to date on this one specifically. So you get a, a better MLR. The earnings looks like a very clean beat, um, a little bit over 690 per share here. I think the stock is obviously going to have a very good day. It's just going to come down to follow through and what, you know, investors and analysts see as the, the go forward plan here. Yeah. And, and we are seeing, um, you know, related reactions from Humana as well as CVS, those most exposed um, to Medicare on the back of UNH, Jared. And I'm wondering when it comes to the conference call, which I think is in a, just about an hour's time, a little over an hour's time, what do you want to hear? Because they guided very conservatively in that they told investors basically expect a high utilization rate for the rest of the year. Um, do you think that will change at all? So it's really tough to tell. I mean, I don't think we're going to get anything out of the company um, that's ultimately negative with respect to their view on utilization through the course of the year. I think they're going to remain pretty conservative. I think the numbers out there that the street has kind of reflect that already. Um, it's a little bit tough to kind of parse out all the puts and takes with the quarter because of the change healthcare situation, as you alluded to earlier. But it doesn't seem like from the commentary this morning just from the release that they expect trends to change materially. So maybe, you know, maybe the outlook over the next couple quarters is, you know, pretty similar. You know, they can kind of manage MLR appropriately. It's a very difficult number to kind of, um, you know, analyze on a line item by line item basis because we just don't have that much information, you know, but if they continue to beat quarters, at least optically, stock is going to go higher from here. So you're more optimistic than you were just last night, Jared, on UNH? I'm not necessarily more optimistic. Um, I just feel like these numbers are obviously a lot better than I think the analyst community at large believed they were they were going to come in at. Um, earnings very strong, I think is, you know, maybe even, you know, more important than the MLR because of all the one-timers. Even you, mm -hmm. when you kind of consider the one-timers in the quarter, they still beat. So it looks like a clean number. That was, I think, a pretty big concern. We talked about that last night as well. Right. Um, I think it's it's tricky, right? Because you've got UNH this morning, which looks like obviously a, a very good number relative to expectations. Mm -hmm. But then when you look at J and J, and you kind of look at the detail within their within that company, the medical device segment overall for key categories um, that kind of are impacted by procedure volume, orthopedics, cardiology, were very strong. Um, so it's just it's difficult, actually, even with both these sets of numbers to reconcile exactly what's going on here, right. because you can argue that both are, are pretty strong here.